I covered 12 studies on NMN and its various health effects in humans in my last video. And my conclusions there were, well, less enthusiastic than most others. But one person I also mentioned was this famous longevity scientist, Dr. David Sinclair, who was at the very least a huge proponent of NMN supplementation for longevity and overall health. And while most of his evidence was based on animal models, he has now published a study on NMN in humans. And the results are really interesting, especially if you compare them to my conclusions in the last video. Okay, so Dr. Sinclair's study is, as all other studies were, a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study. Participants were either given NMN each day for four weeks, or they were given a placebo, a fake treatment. So what did the researchers find? Well, for one, NAD levels did rise, which is the whole point of supplementing with NMN. The idea is that NMN, which is a precursor molecule to NAD production, will increase the production of NAD and thereby increase NAD levels. Then NAD has a series of effects within the cells. Specifically, it's involved in a number of enzymatic reactions from cellular energy generation in the mitochondrion by interacting with the tricarboxylic acid cycle, which ultimately charges it to be used by the electron transport chain at, for the end result of ATP, so that's cellular energy, to being used by other enzymes like PARP to repair our DNA, our genes. There are about a hundred other reactions as well, but those are two of the major ones. So Dr. Sinclair's study proves that we can increase our blood NAD levels, but does that ultimately lead to functional improvements, clinical improvements? Well, if we look at measures like body weight, we see in blue that NMN supplementation led to maintenance and possibly a slight reduction in body weight compared to placebo. Oh, and just as a side note, there are a few issues with some of the data that I'm going to be presenting, but more on that in a bit. Let's just pretend like everything is hunky-dory and we'll skip along the NMN road, holding hands and singing songs worry-free. Another measure that improved is liver fat. So we can see that the placebo group experienced an increase in liver fat, but the NMN group didn't, or that's how the data trends. Not bad. The same was also true for total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, triglycerides, and other lipid measures. Okay, so what's the rub, Nick? Hold on, pause. What's the rub? I honestly don't know where that came from, but I know what it means or what it actually translates to. So what's the deal here or what's going on? I mean, humans have such an odd expression. Anyway, excuse this side thought. So what's the rub, Nick? Seem fitting to add an accent there. The, the rub is that if you look at the baseline values for these participants, they might make a pretty big difference. What do I mean? Well, when we're comparing two groups, we want the groups to be as similar as possible at the beginning of the study. Otherwise, any differences that exist at the beginning of the study could be the real reason for the results and not the intervention of the treatment, in this case, NMN. And when looking at the baseline data, first, nothing is annotated to signify statistical differences, which is a real pain to decipher, which I have to admit is a major pet peeve of mine. Additionally, the way that the results are written in the paragraphs is confusing, so I'm making do with what I have available. Okay, disclaimers out of the way, here's the problem. The researchers write out that the placebo group and the NMN group were similar at baseline. They don't supply any statistics, so I'm just assuming that they mean that there is no statistical difference between the groups. But if you look at the values, the NMN group clearly seems to have higher baseline values in a number of conditions. For example, total cholesterol, which is one of the metrics that we looked at earlier, was 30 points higher in the NMN group or LDL, so another marker, we see values 20 to 30 points higher in the NMN group. Or check this out, liver fat, which was literally double in the NMN group, at least by average measurements. Now, you might still be wondering, what's the big deal here, Nico? I can't help myself. Okay, well, I'll tell you. If we show the results again, for example, total cholesterol, we see a rise in the placebo, remember? 
Well, that rise is roughly 20 to 30 points, which would land it right around where the NMN group began. This is also true for several other measures. So we still don't have any proof that the baseline measures were actually different. So practically speaking, statistically speaking, they were the same. So this change may actually be meaningful due to NMN supplementation alone, since it's the only different variable as we discussed earlier. But I'm not certain because the placebo group only had nine participants in it. And with such a small sample size, is there truly no difference at baseline between the two groups? Or is this a matter of being underpowered? Which means that we don't have enough participants to detect an effect if there were an effect. I realize this is getting into the weeds here and I may need to CPR to resuscitate you back to the living considering your death from boredom, but these few issues aren't even the whole story, but I'll let it rest here. So let's get back to the practical. What does this all mean for you? Well, I'm not going to deny the results of this study. Clearly there were effects. I'm a little concerned about how meaningful these effects are, but let's assume the most optimistic and say that NMN had an effect. Well, the participants of the study were in their 60s and quite overweight. So the data here, while showing some much greater effects compared to the previous video conclusion of the other 12 studies, still falls in line with my conclusion. Older individuals and people who are not in good health might reap some benefit from NMN supplementation. Oh yeah, but who funded this study? Let's pop this up for you to read. I'm sure the who fund it crowd will get a kick out of this. The study was not only funded by Dr. Sinclair's company, but they had a say on the study design and they also reviewed the study results before it was sent for publication. But hey, why rely on one study when you could be looking at many studies on NMN? So check out my far more detailed NMN investigation right here. And otherwise, I'd recommend something else for you here. Bye. <laughs>